two. I would like to start this video by saying the newest kit ops also has custom profile support. And what this means is that if I were to select this edge and just mark it and then press shift P to just roll through some profiles and we put a custom profile on this and we go under kit ops and we just choose any insert and we add an insert. You can see that the bevel profile doesn't get reset. It's treated as if it's real geo. And while it just seems like this is something that should inherently just be easy, it wasn't actually the most straightforward thing in order to get done. And this level of support for being able to just have us stack mods without destroying the previous data was a bit of an undertaking. I'm glad it has been accomplished. So with that, we'll press Control in and make a new file and we'll take our cube and press GZ minus one. And after moving it down below the floor, I'll press Control A and we're just going to apply all of our locations and then SX2 to scale it out twice. And from here, I'm just going to select this. I'm just going to press Control R and add a loop cut down the middle, add a loop cut here as well. And then we can select all four of these edges and just choose to mark it. Uh, actually, Control click mark to add a bevel. So it appears that we didn't apply to scale, but by pressing C, we can turn on clamp overlap to. Uh, uh, prevent these from being able to jump across, which is what would normally happen, but it looks like they stop at the edge. So after applying the scale, we now have the bevel about where we want it. Let's try that again, make sure. All right. And we may want to reset our profile to 0.5. So we'll just press one for that. And we see that, you know, we're able to kind of overshoot the clamp overlap a little bit, which is undesirable. So pressing C, ensures that it will stop promptly where it's supposed to allowing us to be a rounded shape just like we intended but with the edges able to meet here it does mean that we probably need to just add a weld just click because the lines are already meeting just to clean that up so now we have this shape that we can just go in and bevel and we could just turn it back into a box we can turn it into a rounded pill shape and there will be no issue there so finally we'll just go in edit mode and select these top faces. And if you've been following my content, you know that I have select boundary loop map to shift tilde, but by selecting it, we can select the boundary loop. And if we control click mark, we can see that now we're able to begin beveling. So we'll press C for clamp overlap on this as well, and just begin rolling in our bevel. Of course, I'll press one to reset it to its defaults. And then in object mode, you more than likely already know what's about to happen. So I will just go under bevel, make sure I'm modifying the right one, and I'll just press Shift P. We'll actually bring up our bevel profile from the previous video, which was bevel number 30, which is this one right here. Actually quite interesting from the looks of it. And we'll select this shape and control click bevel to just add a new bevel. More than likely the control click wasn't needed, but we'll press one to adjust the auto smooth for our bevel and now that we have the shading we want, we can alt click sharpen in order to add a weight to normal. And now we have this interesting insert that looks fairly intricate, but it is just a fairly simple, comp as a fairly simple series of modifiers along with um, a bevel profile for the most part. So let's say that we wanted to actually reuse this. So I'm gonna press Q O T for, you know, two shape which is basically Q operations and two shape. And in the F9 menu of two shape, we're actually gonna to choose to copy the first bevel. And even though this shape has turned into a pill, we still got the desired result. It just doesn't look like it. We can just go in here and even just select these four edges. I was about to do it a different way, but we could just mark these edges and then just change this to affect weight and then we have the exact shape. And then from here, we can just put a weld on it. In the future, uh, we'll be adding a system that will actually make more accurate two shapes in the future for certain shapes. So it's something that we are discussing internally. Be prepared for that in the future. So with this shape, we can just bring the face up just a tad. And from here, I'm going to shade this as wire. And it would be a good idea to save it at this point. I mean, more than likely it's not needed. You know, I, I could probably make it to the end of this video without saving, but we'll just call this insert test and we'll just power save that. So if you've been following my content for a while, you know that I'm a very big fan of 
utilizing drivers for things that would normally be a little bit of tedious work. So for example, we want to control the width of the main object using the uh, width of the bull shape, which would probably just be a lot easier in our lives. So we will just actually copy this data path and then we'll select the main object. And this is the width that we aim to actually control, which also controls how the um, bevel profile interacts as well. And by right clicking, we can actually add a driver and we want to put this a single property. And let's see, where is it? It's been a while since I've had to do this, but it's important to do it from time to time in order to make sure that you remember such things. All right, sorry about that. So for setting this object's driver properly, we'll right click, add a driver, and in this driver pop-up window, we'll just change this to be bar, you know, V-A-R. And for this, we'll actually change this to be single property, and we'll point at our object cube 001, and we'll paste in the path that we copied. And now we see that everything is copied over. So basically, if we go in and we adjust our width and lower it, we'll see that now takes place between both objects, which is just a nice way to keep your objects in check. Also, through the F9 of the two shape, I could have parented this shape to this shape, but I didn't do so. So we'll do that at this time with Control-P, and we'll choose Keep Transformation. So everything is so far so good. And just for sanity's sake, we'll press Control-A and just apply all transforms because we just want this to work out. And with Control S, we can now jump into Kit Ops. When it comes to Kit Ops, I like to actually specify the area that I plan to save it to before. So we're still working in our same insert folder. And this one will be called, um, you know, Profile Cutter. Gotta, gotta think it out in advance. So we'll create insert and we'll change this to wire. And so far, so good. We probably wanna slap this with a blank material and we'll choose Save Insert. And inside of Save Insert, we'll just call this um, you know, we'll just call it profile cutter one, not the greatest name. I had to think on the fly there, lost the name I had in my head. So if we look at our scene, this is what our default scene is going to look like that ship provides us with, which is great and all, but we're just going to delete everything and make it ours. So we'll just remove that and I'll just press alt V B. And we could just scroll through some blank light setups and just get a nice blank light that we want to use to render our thumbnail. Of course, at this point, we're rendering purely for the thumbnail, but we also do want to um, embellish as much as possible to ensure that we get the um, nicest thumbnail possible. So I just like to scroll through and just look at possibilities of what the thumbnailer could have been. Uh, of course, if you're the type of person, you could get in here and very um, specifically adjust settings to your liking. But we'll just choose to render our thumbnail. And once that thumbnail is done rendering, we can close the scene. And we're back to where we started. So we go to solid mode. We see that our shape is turned back into a solid. Never fails. And we could actually just save this file and then press Control N and make a new file. And by pressing N, we can bring up Kit Ops, go under our KO export, actually wrong folder. That folder will bring up more questions than answers now. Everybody's asking me about the inserts that are in there. We'll just allow this a moment to load. Hmm, maybe I press Control N, there we go. I was thinking I pressed Control N a little too hard. And we'll just choose to add our insert. And we see that it's just an innocent little insert. In fact, I'm not sure what I did there. Let's try that again. And let's try that again. Sometimes I just click a little too fast. So now that we have this insert brought in, let's test out if our uh, drivers went through. So we'll turn off auto select and let's take a look at this. And we see that the driver's connected. So if we go in here and we adjust the bevel, we see that our bevel is actually adjusting to fit the second one. However, it doesn't look like it's actually one to one. I wonder what that could be. More than likely, this is because of the scale actually being applied. So let's do that again. And somehow we ended up with a custom profile on this particular insert. So I'll press 
control P to remove any sort of custom profile. We'll set this to 0.5. And we see that we're able to at least get the insert that we planned for, but it may not translate so well with the scale depending if the scale is differentiate between the two. So let's try it with this one. Instead of actually just going in and just clicking bevel, we hover over it and we look at the tooltip where it says that shift clicking will bypass the scale. Let's actually give that one a try. I'm gonna shift click bevel. And now whenever we bring the uh, weight down, we see that it actually conforms to it a lot proper, a lot better versus if we just general click it, it will apply to scale. So this is something that I believe that we dealt with in the past in previous experiments and have tried to take steps to mitigating inside of Bevel. So in case you're ever wondering why there's an option to bypass scale, this is an example on why such a thing would exist. So here we are modifying another one. And the best part is that this is a dynamic type insert. We can select this and just go and adjust Bevel and I'm gonna control roll to get to my custom profile and if we press shift p we can just scroll through and roll through different combinations of what this profile could be so hopefully you guys are kind of seeing the potential on what lies with this sort of workflow but i'm definitely eager for what it holds for the future but with that i hope you guys are getting in here creating these inserts and i'll wrap up this video and see you guys next time